Alright, it's that time again, kitties. This is Spooktergeist, along with the other StarCast, Star whatever, these people. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't Star Wars. Um, Jar Jar I'm, and I'm, Jar Jar and Galato. Uh, I'm John Boyega. Added again. What? What? I'm John <laughs> Cena. Hi. <laughs> He's not in Star Wars either. Yeah, he definitely is. Oh, really? I think he suplexes Jar Jar in one of the, <laughs> in one of the uh, deleted It's scenes. extended universe. You, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> you don't read the novel. I'm sorry, but that's not anything. even canon anymore, so... <laughs> yeah, you're right. John Cena did get uh, transmogrified into a literal laser cannon. That was kind of cool. I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, what what do we do? I mean, with, there's so much to, to talk about. Spook, what what's happening? Well, right now, I just got back from my vacation visiting family. My dog died along the way, my little chihuahua, Sam. So So we had him frozen with dry ice in a beer cooler for like two weeks with us. Cool. Because like hell, we're going to go back for Sam. Wow. So yeah, I just got back and now I'm finally starting to get to work on episode three. Wow, what a story. I don't know what to say after that. I don't know either. This is, uh, it's terrible, but it's also kind of Kafka-esque in a way. I kind of like the absurdity of it. I, I mean, think. I guess I'd expect nothing less from the creator of Star Troid. <laughs> I, I think it, everything's in its rightful place. Godspeed. Yeah. Um, I'll fit that into an episode somehow. <laughs> I hope so. In loving memory. Um, oh, what do you want to talk about before we get into this thing? Anything specific? Oh, man, I got nothing specific to talk about. (laughs) Most of what I got to talk about is just like... Hmm? No, go ahead. Oh. Uh, Most of what I got to talk about is with this episode and episode three stuff, but I can wait till we do commentary on that shit. Okay. Okay. Well, should we get on with it then? Yep. Yeah, let's just start it. Um, who yeah. wants to count down? I'll count down. We'll do a countdown here. Or no, you could do a countdown. All right. Press play in three, two, one, go. All right, here we are. Yep. I love this spaceship. Uh, and this interior I spent like two weeks on. I was wondering how long it took you. It's so <laughs> complicated. Jeez. Is the background like the main thing that... The backgrounds, are they like the main thing that like holds up production? Yeah, the backgrounds take forever because I always make them too intricate and I'm like horrible at coloring anything. <laughs> Uh, but, but I love the end result so much. So, yeah, I mean, I agree. It it works in the end. I just there's just so much going on. I guess if uh, do you do you feel like you're you want to like bottle a lot of stuff? Like, do you when you finish a really tough background, do you ever feel like I'm just gonna set the whole episode on this background because I don't feel like doing that anymore? Or do you just make as many as you want? I just make as many as I want, but at the same time. I try to make as few backgrounds as possible. Okay, all right. Like, as you can see, a lot of the times the be- the action happens like it's a play on a single set. Like, I don't have many uh, different camera angles. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm just a hack. Yeah, there's just <laughs> a lot of foregrounded stuff. And I feel like that's, I mean, for me, that's the way that good cartoons are made, I guess. You don't need any of these really complicated cinematographical um, techniques to get things across. The characters are so forward, I think, is the thing. I'm going to start writing, like, all the scenes, like, with real specific backgrounds. Background 52. Um, Four <laughs> pages. There is a spring at the top right. It's kind of kinked, but it's also real thick. <laughs> <laughs> the rust is a specific hue. <laughs> a very very specific hue. Uh, and there's Rolio, one of my new favorite characters. My period favorite character. He's 
fucking he's such a mess man should we talk about like what he's like based on like the voice and shit well for me the whole inspiration with this snoring thing is um my roommate from college i don't know his name i didn't bother to learn it or maybe i blocked it out but he had this horrible thing where whenever he snored you could hear it from across the hallway Jesus. He just breathed so weirdly. I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> Poor guy's like suffering from sleep apnea. Yeah, he doesn't even like know it. Funnel. And everyone's making yeah, fun of Yeah, and then I make a freaking joke about it on my cartoon. <laughs> I'm really hoping he looked like that too. No, he was uh, a person of color. And he was bigger. Yeah. Well, this guy's green. Yeah, he is. I mean, a, what he is color? A, what other colors are there? White, yellow, red. Oh. There's all sorts of colors in this rainbow of humanoid <laughs> creatures. I try to use as many as possible. Look at those gogs. I, I, I gotta say, when I saw the character, I, f- I forget what the etiology of it was, but. I think it's when I saw the character, I already had a voice in mind, and then I think it was you and me, clone, that we spoke about using the voice from one of our original podcasts. Um, Yeah, that's what I was going to say. He's actually the voice that we made up for the fake delivery man on our other podcast, on our podcast, Um, but he's based on my real delivery man, like from real life, (laughs) who who would just like... Yeah, I'd order, I'd order like a fourteen hundred dollar synthesizer, and then like Mel calls me and she's like, "Hey, there's like a box in the middle of the road, and I can't <laughs> get it, and I have to like come home and get this like synth like out of the snow and like off the road." And then like we found out that this guy, his name was um, was Kevin, and it was amazing because that's the name of the guy from king of queens it's also a del- shitty delivery man so we started calling him kevin jones this horrible raspy <laughs> um what what i what i can only imagine a cartoon new yorker sounds like to everyone in the world a cartoonish <laughs> squat man um possibly italian possibly jewish uh, the culture really wasn't at the forefront uh, when I thought of the voice, I just kind of went for gold. Yeah, he kind of became like Yiddish or something. Yeah, that's what I like about him. I think he's so he's so persnickety for for being such a piece of garbage. I don't think that we've ever heard the character say this line, but could you maybe do the voice and have him like let us know where he's walking? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm walking here. That's it. It's pretty much his New York. There it is. There's Rolio, uh, Radro, who is who who honestly mirrors me too much. Um, <laughs> very strange. Oh, I love this facial animation. That eye, <laughs> that kinked eye. Look at those things. Where are they going? He's like a chameleon. I think he might be part reptoid. Part reptoid, part pineapple. And I liked this ship. So small. Yeah, if I was going to buy a a spaceship, I would get that one. I think the first time I saw the concept for this table with that fucking horse head, I shit myself. (laughs) It's so perfect. It is so... Now I think it would have been a really good place to put a Godfather joke, but I think that's just hindsight. Oh, yeah. I should have done that. There's a lot of stuff I should have done, like... Maybe giving Montar a mouse so he doesn't just rub meat on his face. But I think that's better. I'm pretty sure that in the notes, um, in the stage directions, he was supposed to be rubbing, rubbing it on his nipples. Oh yeah, but that was the um, other version, the final version, but I used accidentally used the version before that one, so a lot of the best jokes we had didn't make it in, because I'm a freaking <laughs> idiot. That's a little bit of behind the scenes for you guys. Yeah. Behind the scenes in the in the process. This is how artistry works. Uh, here's this dead robot. Oh god, that's another part <laughs> where I like flipped my shit. Like I went, 
I went ballistic. I started like tearing shit off my wall. Like, God, it's such a repulsive creature that you designed. I love designing stuff like that. It's it's really evocative of like a it's like a horrible uh, abortion uh, between like a Ren and Stimpy character and an Invader Zim character, and it was just <laughs> killed in the womb. It's very good. It is one of my faves. Well, thank you. I loved animating that thing. Whenever it moves. It's so it's so aggressively subtle. <laughs> aggressively subtle. And I spent so much time on these little purple guys. And How much time did you spend them. on uh, on the tongue here? I imagine people who saw this have already seen the episode. I'd love to know. Oh, they better have seen it. Here it is. Uh, Here yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> Another point of contention for me. I just uh, that just came to me last minute when I was animating this sequence. I was originally just gonna have one of these background pink guys. It's kind of rubbing up against her, but then I thought, nah, I better have that thing. I think you chose correctly. <laughs> this piranha plant with that strange tuber tongue. You really made this distraction awesome. I love this. <laughs> I, I love the line. <laughs> right here where I'm standing. <laughs> <laughs> I had it to go have. What's funny is that the way that I, the way that I like retcon and change up Radro's lines, I actually make him more sane than I actually am. So like, it's really sad for me to watch Radro and be like, "Boy, I wish I could be that well kept together in real life." <laughs> It'd just be nice to rehearse those lines bef- in real life. We never get rehearsal for real li- for real life. No, I, th- I think everything you've changed, you've actually made it better than what I wrote. Don't say that. I'm a shitty writer. I'm blushing. Oh my god. <laughs> Every time I watch this episode, I remember there's so many jokes that come in from the ceiling and so many visual gags that I, I forget until the moment before. And then when I see them, I just giggle in delight. In future episodes, I want more visual gags, so. Yeah, I gotta get, put more get of those your, in. Get your hands ready. We're going to write them in for you. <laughs> I love this weird cat thing with the bypass surgery or whatever the fuck that is. <laughs> when when we do a spinoff, our Rogue One will be all of these guys here. <laughs> oh, I do love that idea. I call uh, doing the voice for the coin slot dick, dude. <laughs> Because I feel like he's got a lot to say. Yeah, let's let's hear like a, a line of like, give me a coin or something. <clears throat> Put a coin in my dick. There we go. It's kind of it's kind of just meat wad, <laughs> to be honest. But I think we could work it. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, I forgot to say I love this uh, whole rant you go on about getting slapped and electrocuted throughout the entire episode. It's great. I love this. Is to me this is this kind of slapstick this is the reason that i like futurama that kind of slapstick because what i wanted to do with radro's voice specifically is i wanted to make him a really instead of stupid i wanted to make him an unhinged philip j fry so (laughs) i feel like a lot of these jokes where he's just getting the shit beat out of him i feel like it 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 makes the show so much closer to futurama in the jokes and then when you see the visuals it's Com- it's like a completely different product. That's that's why I'm so passionate about this character. This is just look at this. Look at these disgusting creatures laying about <laughs> on the ground. I was gonna animate them better, but I don't have time. You don't need for to that. animate them. You don't need to animate them. I like it when they just fall. Like these guys. Look at them. Finally, I love their little legs. How they like they're adorable. They look like scenesters. <laughs> little skinnies. Like the guy who tries to run away. I finally figured out how to get the portals to spin at an angle. Oh, man. Nice. Uh, This dude's my favorite. This dude to the right, uh, he reminds me of the Scooby-Doo astronaut skeleton. (laughs) (laughs) I like this room. If if I was in a space station, this would be the room that I would live in. Yeah, this is my favorite set to draw. I love all the items on their table. There's, like, handcuffs couple dildos sword some beads some machine that is either 
some sort of alien Sibian or an arcade machine. We can't tell. <laughs> I think it might be both. <laughs> I'm hoping it's both. We haven't talked about Duez at all. This is his like. Oh yeah, I forget. Episode. <laughs> That's true. He, what he, was the inspiration for this dude? It was just like this kind of weird alien I always drew on like my notebooks and stuff. Ah. But for some reason, they just never put him into anything. So I figured, why not now? Can he hold things in one hand? Yeah, he hold, okay. He was holding that drill. Well, that's true. That's true. He has like cartoon flesh mittens. That's fair. <laughs> With which he could do incredible feats of prestidigitation. I feel like he doesn't really come into his own in this episode. We don't get the the jokes and stuff that I'm hoping for in next episode. Yeah, episode three he gets better characterization. Yeah, well, right now he's in his element. Like this is where he lives on Montar's ship, so he's not really like he's not vulnerable at all in this. Yeah, he's not emotional or doing anything. Once we get him off of this ship, he kind of loses it, I think. So. Yeah, the three-dimensionality of the third episode as opposed to this one for him specifically is like worlds apart. Yeah. I, th- I think um Duez was more of like a late addition into this one because I was trying to like get him into episode three, but then I'd have to like chop episode two in half or something. But I think the way we got it now is uh, better. And again, this this other rant from Radro. Yeah, this is my favorite part when he's like heap. <laughs> I, like, it's probably die. my favorite thing I've ever written and or voiced, <laughs> that part. If I were you, I would just yell that all the time. Heap! Yeah, your girlfriend's just like, I didn't say anything about it. In the, <laughs> middle, of the, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the cul-de-sac. <laughs> I'll put a box on my head. Oh, and there's a... Oh, God, a Rolio again. My boy. <laughs> Take me my with son. you. <laughs> my son. If I ever had progeny, that's how I'd want them to shoot out of a of a cervix. Seaweed hair, fat as fuck, with armor on, and just a repulsive person. Then I just like that uh, Marlene over there doesn't give a shit and just kind of leaves. <laughs> she really does not. <laughs> Halfway through his speech, she's gone. She just rolls her eyes and then gets in the ship. What a poor guy. Sometimes I feel bad for him. Sometimes I, like... He's such an asshole. I could tell he plays Pokemon Go, like, all day. <laughs> I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah, for sure. And he's, like, probably knocking kids out of the way to get the squirrel. <laughs> and I like this huge explosion, totally inspired from the Nostromo explosion in Alien. Hell Yeah. Yeah, it looks so good. And originally, the they were supposed to be like a, some more stuff with Skizlith and with uh, Duez in the ship, but God, episode two was just grinding me down. I was already almost <laughs> twice as long as the first one, and I'm like, God, I gotta get this out. Yeah, this was beefy. This was way closer to like a William Street show episode length, which is... That's my favorite episode length. I like 15 uh, flat. 30 is too much of a time investment for somebody with my amount of obsessive compulsivity. So I love that 15-minute mark. I can't imagine. I mean, you could probably make a movie if you wanted to. Out oh, yeah, six episodes like... in a movie. That's six the goal. episodes. No, six wait. Episodes. Six seasons. Sorry. <laughs> six. Se- I was going to say yeah. six episodes in a movie. Boy, that's that's not too much. Well, yeah. We could we could shorten it down. It's the new yeah. the new norm. We need 90 so we can be syndicated. Isn't that the cutoff? <laughs> What's the deal song? with Star Troid? <laughs> I really like the idea of Rolio being a stand-up comedian. Retcon. Here we go. <laughs> Starting to change your whole universe. How does that feel? <laughs> God, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're dead inside, I can tell. Oh, God. Oh, Although man. I do want to make a movie at some point. Of I think this. You should. Yeah. Probably to end it. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, well, we get canceled after, like, the, what, fifth season, and then we gotta yeah. do the movie. Well, no, there needs to be, like, 
a four-year hiatus, and then come back in season seven, which won't yeah, be as good seven, as season six. It wasn't as good. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And then we make a movie, and then, uh, or, or actually, season seven, everybody hates it, but Tumblr loves it, because we put a lot of stuff in there about, uh, uh, you know, gender positivity, race positivity, and yeah. then everybody else hates it, because Tumblr beats the shit out of it with fan art. We come back with a movie, and we make it the most offensive thing ever, and then I think we're in the money, personally. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the fan art. I want, I want to see, um nude versions of all the characters fat <laughs> versions of all the characters and i think radril would be great for a hentai oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 he he needs about 20 more tentacles and they need to be really sticky but i think we can get there <laughs> yeah we could probably just write that in ourselves actually, we can just like dip them in it. canola oil or something <laughs> i think we get pretty close to that next episode i think <laughs> so oh we do we do. We don't yeah. want to spoil it. No spoilers, oh, yeah. we, but we keep, definitely keep your, get close. Keep your eyes peeled on this keep, channel. <laughs> keep your eyes peeled, but also keep your keep your expectations kind of low because it's probably not as visceral as you're imagining right now. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, we'll, but it's there. we'll work you up to it. Don't keep worry. Keep your expectations low and keep your pants lower. I thought you were going to say something like that. Oh, <laughs> this is why I write and I don't speak because I would have <laughs> thought of that. But here I am making a goddamn fool of myself. <sighs> well, that's all I've got. That's my that's my burn right there on my old boy Radro. <laughs> yeah, that sounds sounds good to me. Um, I'm I'm out of here. Let's let's yeah, me, me see too. everybody for episode three. Tasty. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.